And with that follow, let me welcome all of you to the one and only Excellency Shoutcasting Scrim Gym. This is the midweight, and we have got ourselves a fancy little re-roll because over the last several months we have been running these Scrim Gyms. We have found a bunch of new changes that we can make to make them so much cleaner, so much better, so much more efficient for all of the players, which means we're back to week number one, baby. All of these teams will be playing to grow stats over the course of the next couple of weeks. We got some fancy end of the year stuff in mind. But before we get too much further, I am Jake Kelton, joined by the one and only Wraith as my co-caster. Wraith, we've got Defiance back in the hot seat, taking on a new team, Rift Warriors, tonight for game number one. I'm excited to see that, Jake. How are you doing this evening? I am doing quite all right. I want to thank all of the viewers as well as the teams for their patience when it comes to this. Had a very small family thing that came up. Had to take a longer call than I would have liked, but that is out of the way. Everyone is doing well, and we can go into that at another time. We've got some teams to introduce, and we don't want to take too much longer because we're ready to jump into these games. So for the side of Rift Warriors, we've got Arcana, Prince in the top lane, Krixion in the jungle, Wind in the mid lane, Casper in the 80 carry. It might be Kaisper, Casper. Somebody let me know in the Twitch chat and this name I'm going to butcher so let's ruin it Kakashi in the bottom lane a support And for the side of SPK defiance returning for another week. We've got SF person guy in My the top lane Tricks one in the jungle majestic in the mid lane blush uwu in the bottom lane ADC role and Spartans rounding it out in the bottom lane supportive role now, what do you think is going to happen on this one, Jake? Do you think uh, SPK Defiance is going to return and really make it happen this week? Or do you, think, do you think Rift Warriors is going to take the title? I mean, it's SPK. You cannot count these guys out. Sure, they've had some weeks that they don't look quite as hot. They only make it to that second round before falling. They're a bit short of getting into that finals. But Defiance have, in the last couple of weeks, even though we are on a new reroll, we've seen these teams before. They can pick some very teamfight heavy uh, compositions, and they are so good mechanically with the champions that they grab. So I'm excited to see them, especially as we are on that world's patch. There's a whole bunch of new changes, a whole bunch of new champions that start to get prioritized, like that Rek'Sai that literally disappeared for a very long time, many months, and now has come back. I saw it being played last night in the lightweight scrim gym. It might show up tonight if it is loud through the picks and bans. I'm still expecting Caitlyn, Ash to be some of these top lane 80 carries, but even the ones like Lucian and Ezreal, those high mobility champions, even they got a little bit of that kind of uh, buff touch. Uh, Zaya as well, still strong with the Rakan, so not surprised at any of these bands. Yeah. <clears throat> and Zaya, Zaya Rakan is the kind of champion you usually get a two for one with that ban. If you take one of them out of the equation, usually the other one doesn't come through in the context of a of an organized drafting system. Sometimes it will. Um, however, Zaya Rakan is just so much stronger when you pair the two together. Essentially, Rakan gets completely free engage. Um, just with the range extension on his shield dash, uh, Battle Dance, I believe is the name, that ability. And so taking Zaya off the table, if they were going to play Zaya Rakan, most likely they're going to go for something else. Now, one thing to note is that the Kaisa has been left up. So I anticipate seeing that come through very, fairly rapidly in this draft. I'm expecting that. She's such an incredible champion. Easy to hop into that back line, get some really good damage down. The versatility, the late game scaling is a lot of good stuff. Surprise about the Thresh first pick. I understand. I mean, I'm a support main myself. Great at engagements, but he's not typically the strongest champion. And there's so many good counters to him that have recently seen buffs like Liliana, which we're expecting to see a lot in Worlds. And um, just must be that Kakashi is so incredibly strong on this Thresh. They decide to go ahead and grab that for themselves because they can now have more flexibility on the rest of their composition and that's just a confident support first locking in that thresh yep and Believe there's the kaisa that i was future. anticipating always a very strong pick has been ever since her release uh, i guess that's what happens when you give uh, a champion with that much mobility that much late game scaling potential she's kind of like a better version of vein more flexible different build paths you can go completely early game well nothing's completely early game just with the way her kit works but 
a more early game focus build and try and snowball, or you can do the tier Muramana build and try and snowball it into late game. So, um, yeah, so but Juani Kaisa, also, very good. Yeah, Kaisa Sejuani, good pairing there. The CC chains able to work well. Then you can't chain them between the Sejuani and the Kaisa, but Sejuani locks them down long enough for Kaisa to hit them with that Akathian rain, be able to get that execute if they're low enough health. It's just a good, solid front tank line, and at least for an early game jungler, could potentially even fight Sejuani in the very early game, might have some of that mid jungle uh, invading that we see out of Rift Warriors in the early game to shut down Sejuani and keep her from getting that level six quickly to be able to start impacting some of those lanes. As Ash, there it is, that ADC being locked in, expecting some serious pain with that new auto-attack Q, auto-attack reset that she has. Yeah, that's the thing, that Ash just got an insane buff, for those of you who don't know, uh, Jake just kind of went over it, but her Q is now an auto-reset, which it feels so much better. Um, you can auto-Q, auto, and then you get all of those off real quick. Um, kind of just same way you do it with like Jax's auto attacks or something like that. Um, but really has put her up in the top echelon of ADCs this patch. And that's going to be very difficult for Kaisa to lane into. Ash is something of a lane bully, um, because you actually cannot miss her W. It's really not possible if you have brain cells. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, but... Ash, just such a wide skill shot that pretty much hits you at a huge amount of range. And she has a, the second highest uh, base attack range of any ADC in the game. At, I believe it's 625 is Ash's uh, auto attack range. Uh, coming in against the lowly Kaisa, who has 550 range. So she ha definitely has the potential with the slow as well as the W and the auto attack range just really make Kaisa's life suck until the early until uh, the early game's over. Um, but the aggressive nature of Pike Kaisa, there's a potential for a major snowball here. Pike hits a hook at level six. Kaisa follows in. There's a lot of very scary things that can happen. But similarly, level six, Ash Arrow, Thresh Hook, CC lock into death. So it could it's a very, very volatile lane you in need the not bot follow, side. But you must um, witness. As for the jungle matchup though, the Sejuani and the Elise. Elise incredible early game pressure. Um, very powerful champion uh, before 20 minutes, especially with her ability to set up dives underneath tower and, and uh, then uh, reset using her repel skill so that she yeah. doesn't have to tank all of the power of the, the tower on her. Uh, Sidwani, on the other hand, decent early game ganks, but a lot stronger post six and way into the late game. She's just a much better champion. So as. Elise starts to fall off. Sejuani's really going to be on the rise. Uh, all in all, I like the Sejuani pick a little better. It's going to be up to Krixon to really use his pick to shut Sejuani down and just make her life miserable. Well, I love the Orin pick, by the way. Yeah, just very quickly, that's the thing with the Elise is you're put on a timer, right? And at a certain point, 25 minutes into the game, maybe if you get shut down hard, even 20 minutes into the game, you simply become a CC bot hoping to land cocoons, and that's about all you can do. Unless you hard roll in the AP route and try to assassinate someone squishy on the other side, but that's going to be incredibly difficult considering that you want to be able to actually survive through those mid-game fights with the front line of that Sejuani, now Gangplank locked in as well. And then you look at Sejuani and Lissandra. Those ultimate synergize so well they're practically the same thing one is just a point and click and one can be landed from a massive distance so the engage out of defiance is huge you follow that up with a pike cc as well they're going to hurt they have that gangplank to split push so he doesn't even need to join for those bigger fights but he has the aoe ultimate to help lock down the enemy team there's so much good going on for them but the side of rift warriors they've locked in that akali making sure that they get some assassination in as well because they want to make sure that even if they have least starts to fall in that early to mid game they have one of those mid to late game bursting champions that says look your kaisa takes one step out of position she's dead and then they needed a frontline tank so they grab themselves the yorn for the top lane yeah i'm trying to decide which composition i like better usually it's it's a situation where it's like well they clearly have the better the better synergies but both of these drafts look very convincing um this the top lane matchup, the Orn versus the Gangplank, you have 
Uh, that's, that's a very common matchup you'll have, tank versus gank, uh, gangplank, um, in the top side. Um, gangplank, hyperscaler in that top lane, but needs a, a lane where he can, sn like, not get smashed by something like an Akali. Right. Um, it'd be, it'd be hilarious. Now, this is a terrible idea, uh, but if they were to flip and rotate the Akali into the gangplank lane and have... Orin versus Lissandra, because Orin can actually take that matchup uh, using <clears throat> using his Q as well as uh, just early early magic resist makes Lissandra's life really difficult. It's a bad idea, but it'd just be funny if they did it. Um, that being said, there's just so much CC on both sides that the the fighting potential from them in five v five death ball is going to be very impressive. Kaisa's reposition is going to make for some really interesting outplays uh, on both sides between Akali and Kaisa. Because if Akali's fed, she's obviously going to be going for the Kaisa. Right. But Kaisa ha has her uh, reposition from her ultimate, so she can play around that. See, see which uh, which of which of the two ultimates ends up being used better there. Then of well course, there's Pike. And so we, we're looking at the compositions. The one thing we haven't mentioned yet is that Ash and Chana Crystal Arrow Ultimate. Very good for picking people off. If you whiff it, it could be dangerous, but it is a little bit on a shorter cooldown. And so that opportunity to play around it, you got to back off a little bit, wait for it to come back up, and then you can look for another pick. It means that the initiation uh, usually is going to be on the side of Rift Warriors. They also have that Orn called the Forge God to be used to get in and start fights off. And then you pair that with the Elise and the Thresh to follow up on those CC chains, look for those fights. Whereas on SBK Defiance, I'm expecting them to play a little bit more defensively unless Sejuani or Lissandra really can find somebody and pick them off with an ultimate. Most likely, they're going to be playing in response to where Rift Warriors go, try to collapse around them with the faster moving champions of Sejuani hopping over walls, with Pike being able to speed his way in on those boots of mobility, dashing in, looking for someone, and starting to fight off all crazy like. Um, they're going to be a bit more of a responding team. The problem is going to come in play if Defiance starts things off uh, really, really heavily, really early on and gets snowballing, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for Rift Warriors because they will be on the back foot and obviously vice versa. If Rift Warriors uh, play defensively, they could also potentially lose out simply because they delay long enough for the late game Lissandra, late game Kaisa to scale My up late game Gangplank to get three or four items and then they'll just smash every team fight. Yeah, I think I think in the late late game I have to give it to Defiance because of Gangplank Kaisa, um, just a, a lot more damage uh, under the under their belt there. Uh, Ash does scale very well as champion, however, doesn't really hold a candle to Kaisa in the late game. The thing is, is that they don't have a ton of threat onto the Ash though. Um, Gangplank ult could potentially cause problems. Gangplank ult plus Pike coming in uh the lissandra depend like in the late game if ash buys a qss which she should and that gives her enough mr the lissandra alone shouldn't be dangerous enough to threaten the ash without uh a full commitment from gangplank ult as well as pike and that leaves them in a bit of a a dire situation i guess you could say committing that much to one champion and there should be peel from the thresh you know the lantern and the hook and such um, but they both have very, very powerful engages. Orin, uh, which you mentioned with the Call of the Forge God, and the Sejuani on both sides just have this incredible ability to start fights, not to mention the Lissandra. Um, I think Defiance is comp... I I'm going to give them the edge a little bit compositionally. However, the Elise Akali are the, the wild cards here, because Elise can definitely get any one of these lanes snowballing and really far ahead. And if that happens, then all bets are off. Whoever ends up winning lane oftentimes has a heavy advantage going into the late game. Now, uh, it's being pinged out right now, but Kaisa is running the cleanse, which I think is not necessarily a bad idea considering she is laning into an Ash. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd almost expect Ash to be running Cleanse if any AD was going to be running it. Um, just because you have Sejuani Ultimate, you have Lissandra Ultimate. Um, particularly the Sandra Ultimate, you just have to have to either run Cleanse or buy a QSS. Well, it because means that, it's point and click. 
Defiance is playing respectfully, and maybe that'll hurt them because they're playing too respectfully by putting that cleanse onto that Kaisa, but maybe it'll be something that Game Changer, when Ash finds the ultimate onto the Kaisa, thinks that it could be that game-defining moment, the team fight to win it all, and Kaisa just cleanses it and immediately is out and just starts turning the fight around. Another quick mention is that Gangplank at the top side. I love that pick against the Elise specifically because that's usually where Elise likes to go. Crixen on the Elise, heading towards that top lane, pairing up with the Ornn. They can do a lot of work. Hold on, a little bit of skirmish in the bot lane. Gonna drop Kakashi down to about half. Good Kathy and Rain from the Kaisa to start things off. But again, the Gangplank has those oranges, can clear the cocoon from Elise if it even lands, which just limits Crixen's options when it comes to where to gank. Yeah. It just, you just have to be really careful as the Gangplank as to when you use the oranges, though. Um, because that's often the go button for the jungler. If your cleanse is down or something along those lines, then it's very often, oh wow, nice little sidestep from the Thresh there. Um, and, but the hook is not going to land, so that's going to be the end of that. Level 2, though, so it's just a little bit of poke going to be had by the Ash, but nothing crazy from that level 2 all in. Yeah, but that you can see, though, the pressure that Ash can bring. Not only can she clear waves with the volley, but she can poke you as well. It's kind of a two-for-one spell. And then you get the auto-attack reset as well. So players that can play around Ash's capabilities with that auto-volley auto can do a lot of work. And you can see them, once again, just getting harassment down onto Spartans. It's a pike. Ooh. He does not want to take this much harassment. He can step out of vision and heal up pretty well. But if he continues to get beaten up, he's going to run out of potions, and then you can't engage. You do not want to be running forward looking for CC when you're sitting at 300 health. Definitely. Now, of course, there's also the thing that he is Pike, and as you said, can step out of vision, which is one of the most tilting skills in the game, in my personal opinion. It's like, I just chunk you down to zero health. Wait, you're back at full. <sighs> no. Um, but... Uh, the Gangplank in the top lane running that uh, Grasp is going to be a fairly tanky boy in the late game. A good dodge out of the out of the Bones... Bones Cure? Yes. Yeah, Bones Cure. From, from the Pike there, uh, that could have been very bad. Whenever playing into a hook, being near the tower can be very mm. nerve-wracking. If you're playing into a Blitzcrank or a Pike or something, you get hooked under the tower, and suddenly all of the wonderful laning that you've done and the CS lead that you've built up for yourself is all gone because you got hooked and you're dead. Hold on to that turret. Elise his down there was maybe looking for one of those early dives with the Repel to kind of take away that turret aggro, but didn't find anything. Not enough damage done to that Pike and Kaisa, so back away. In the meantime, this mid lane, a bit of a CS lead by the Lissandra, being able to farm up a bit better. Now, it's not truly surprising considering it is that range Lissandra into the auto attacking melee of Wind's Kali. But we'll have to see how that uh, Kali might be able to turn things around post six, which they should get here in not too long. Yeah, and at the moment, uh, yeah, I believe Kaisa, yes. Kaisa has used all of her potions, so even though the CS is fairly even, as well as, oh, uh, Decent chunk onto uh, person guy. Oh, wait, hold on. Coming in from behind tower. Oh, here comes that Sejuani. Frag looking for the grenade, maybe onto Arcane Prince. He's gonna turn things around though. Chases the game flag under turret and makes it only a one for one. Orin sacrifices himself to not give an assist to Sejuani and a beautiful trade in the top lane gets first blood to Rift Warriors. S such a brilliant gank path. Completely countered out by the outplay from Orin there. Arcana Prince absolutely smurfing in this top lane. Lots of uh, just really on the ball looking behind him, realizing there's no way I get out of this alive. So he just goes all in, even under the tower, manages to turn it around and realizes one way or the other, if I die here, it's either I just died a gangplank. Even if I dive this tower and I go down, then... I'm only giving over one kill rather than a kill and an assist. Mm -hmm. And to top that off, 
with Sejuani not sticking around to that top lane, the Gangplank actually had to burn Teleport to catch the wave coming under the turret, whereas Orn was able to walk in. So now that is a summoner spell up for the side of Rift Warriors, which very quickly, let me make note of the fact that in the poll below the Twitch uh, broadcast right now, you guys can vote. It's currently 4-4-3 to the Rift Warriors. So there's obviously a lot of fans of Rift Warriors thinking that they have what it takes to win this one. And Arcana Prince looking pretty good so far. Now, Sejuani is around the corner yet again, and no ward by this Orn to catch sight of Sejuani making her way into the enemy team jungle, which means Gangplank can play up feeling a little bit safe. Yep, just get a little bit of a knock up to clear the wave there, and the CS goes back to even. Sejuani hovering this top side, looking like she really wants to make something happen on this side. Um, try and relieve pressure from the Gangplank a little bit. Uh, oh. TP in that bot lane. Gangplank starts that ultimate as he sees the Elise coming on in. It's actually the Lissandra coming in. She's running up all three members. Nice play from Kakashi, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Crixen drops to the Ignite from the Pike. They're looking for more, but it's in the meantime. Flip to the top side of the map. Back to the bottom. Kakashi going to drop as Blush will pick up the kill. Here comes Akali, though. She's got that level six. Takes down Pike without using the perfect execution yet. It's a double onto the Kaisa as well. Should be a triple on the Majestic. And with started off with an incredible teleport from Majestic, goes to disaster. As three kills are picked up by Wind. Call the Forge guy to the top lane. Arcana Prince getting the knock up under the gangplank. He eats some oranges. He might be K. And he is with Sejuani coming right back in. CC the Orn. And he is going to fall for his aggression. That is four kills to four. Small gold lead for Defiance. But three kills on this Akali. Yeah, I was looking at the top side. I was going to say it was so good that on the other side of the map that Orin didn't go down to that gank, but unfortunately, overestimating his abilities right now, overestimating his tankiness, tries and go for the 2v1, and didn't account for the oranges that Gangplank managed to eat down there. However, the real story in this bot side is the Akali roaming immediately after he, uh, he saw the teleport come out from the Lissandra, roaming down toward that bot side. Hold on, we've got to fight. I don't know this fight's gonna be all that much. A little Void Seeker from uh, no, the Kaisa. No, it's not six. Okay. Pike is gonna try to pull Thresh over the wall! He gets it! Bone Skewer lands! What a shot! Gets that Thresh back over the wall saying, Hold on, you thought we were done with this. We are not. And they're gonna turn onto the Mountain Drake. First Drake of the game. However, Crixton is gonna see Majestic miss the Cocoon. Lissandra can't take the claw over the wall. And I think with the uh, at least mid laner down for a short period, or sorry, bottom lane support being down for a short period of time, they're going to start at the Mountain Drake. Yeah, and there's nothing really they can do to counter it at this point. Um, all Wind can do is just push in a wave and try and get a little bit of advantage. Going to deny the cannon minion, but that's about all they're going to get off of that. Missing a bottom laner. It's always better to put yourself in a situation where you're going to lose an objective, then lose an objective and the fight as well. If they'd gone for that, they most likely would have lost both, considering that Gangplank is level 6, hasn't burned the ultimate. Uh, I know, actually, it is. Where did he use that? He used it in the bottom um, lane fight. Remember when Lissandra TP'd in rooted three members? They were slowed down because of the GP ultimate cannon barrage to hold them in place long enough for Lissandra to actually get there. What started off as a really good fight, and then Akali came in and ruined it all. Yeah, then, uh, yeah, Kali turning it around. Now you have a lot of backline threat onto both this GP and the Kai'Sa, so wind being activated right now is incredibly good for Rift Warrior's composition because uh, if a Kali gets denied and shut down in lane, it's just kind of even that she's not scary enough to actually make it. Alright, going oh. fishing, missing the stun though. Casper might be a bit of trouble. That's gonna be the death sentence landing straight into the cocoon. Shut down onto the Kaisa. She will fall. Frag gonna be the next one up. The Thresh doesn't need to do much CC. Just place them in tough position for Crix and the Elise to pick up two kills and a great response gank out of the Elise. You can see Lissandra and Akali both roaming, but didn't quite get to the bottom lane in time. Yeah, unfortunately. Ash missed playing a little bit there. Should have taken the Bone Skewer before going for the the Lantern. But she clicked it and ended up getting hooked out of the Lantern. Otherwise, she would have survived and gotten the, uh, the kill turnarounds as well. A uh, little bit of trading in the top side. Um, 
but nothing really to speak of at the moment. I'm wait. Arcana Prince keeps posturing a little bit forward like he wants to make something happen, and he does have a decent CS lead over the Gangplank at the moment. I think as he gets more and more armor, uh, SF Person guy is going Hex to have is going to go straight fishing. Hold on, he did get played backwards. Going to miss the Bone Skewer, now has to run away. Ash poking away onto Blush, ooh woo. Dropping the Kaisa to half health, and man, Pike can heal up, but Kaisa has to chug potions that she doesn't have to try to heal back up. Yeah, that that was an impressive bit of positioning from the Ash in that moment. Hiding behind the minions, constantly auto-attacking. Something I see a lot of in these games is people when you have a blitz crank running at you you have a pike or a thresh and they're walking toward you uh people get scared and they like run away and they don't auto attack but ash just standing there weaving in and out of the minions making sure that they block the bone skewers path just constantly autoing the pike and pike got to the point where he's like if i keep walking forward i'm gonna die whether i hit this hook or not i'm going down so he had to back off and then ash immediately switches the uh focus onto the ad carry and ends up getting a heavy chunk onto both of them. So very well played. And this Pike, keep in mind, was counterpicked to this Thresh. So it was the side of Defiance that wanted this Pike. But every time he tries to dive forward, it's a great response from that Thresh. Just hitting the flay, knocking him backwards, delaying him. It's only when he finds a Bone Skewer that something can happen. Tip for tat in the top lane, both kind of chewing off a little bit of each other's health. It does seem like that Elise is going to be able to grab the Rift Herald, so Rift Warriors picking up yet again uh, their first neutral objective of the game as the Mountain Drake did go over to Defiance. Next Drake will be a Mountain as well in about a minute and a half. Mm -hmm. And Wind is down to where he's clearing uh, clearing caster minions with just one Q, so that's uh, that puts him in a position where he'll be able to knock out the wave and roam if he so desires. Lots of pings onto the Sijuani. Frag is in the enemy jungle. Might be collapsed upon, but we gotta fight at the top side as Crixen comes in onto the turret. Call the Forge God setting up the cocoon. Easy peasy when you've got no least. Start it early. Now Wade gonna be in a bit of trouble taking the shroud, trying to stay invisible. The Ash Arrow's not gonna land on anyone. Pike Ultimate is good. They've got themselves that one kill secured. Oh no way! The Ash Ultimate locks up the Lissandra. She can't chase. She does see them on the ward. Holy cow! The Ash went the wrong arrow. Uh, missing the bot lane, hitting the top side. So Lissandra could not chase. The chase is on the bot lane though. Here's that bone skewer out of the pike. Can it land? It's gonna miss the Ash. The Thresh goes back in, trying to play the Kaisa under the turret. She's gonna get the Kathy Rain down onto Kakashi. Get the Thresh get out and stay alive. Nice little lock up from the Sejuani, but the Void Seeker's going to miss. Kakashi gets out alive. Casper gets out alive. They have all survived that fight, but everyone's health bar incredibly low. Yeah, that was very close on both sides and being... Oh, hold on a second. I just want to comment. Arcana Prince getting a ton of plates there. Mm -hmm. So much money. I didn't realize that that many plates had gone down right after that fight. But yes, that was an incredibly close fight on both sides of the map that could have ended up being the hinge point. The game is fairly well balanced at the moment. A difference of a little over a thousand gold for the moment. Um, wind giving over that shutdown right there, going a little too aggressive on the Sejuani with the pike roaming up. Um, definitely helped uh, Defiance get into the game. And going this. back into the game, rather. Still, the Akali being as fed as she is is, is is a question mark that I think that Rift Warriors is going to have to answer. Or, the, pardon, Defiance is going to have to answer. Yeah, the thing that I like most about the fact that the two teams are fairly even is that the both teams are proactively looking for plays. Elise coming to the top side, Sejuani going in the bot, Voidseeker's going to see Crixen. As the team going to step forward, the Bone Skewer misses out of the pike, though. Both teams positioning around the Mountain Drake, but unable to pull the or unwilling oh, to pull no. the trigger just yet. Have they found wind? She is going to go into the shroud for a moment longer, but she's seen though. There's that CC locking her up, but they're fighting in a channel, and that means that it's the Enchanted Crystal Arrow locking up Frag, who's going to turn things around with an ult of her own. Locking up the Elise, she takes the cocoon out. Orm TPing in. If he gets to call the Forge God into this small space, oh. it might knock those several members up. But Sarah's going to get locked down. She's going to fall before she can even alt herself. The Kai's going to be the next one up. Nice ultimate over the wall. Blush gets out. Hold up. There's the least chasing with the repel. She is gone. Wind gonna go use the shroud for a moment. Person a guy being burned down by our cat of prince because it's a big old 5v5. Spartans is able to make his way out. Person a guy on the run as well. Dropping Crixen low. Frag gonna be running away on the Sijuani. 
Chris and the guy is still the one man facing off against five members. Pike coming in from behind, maybe looking for Crixen. He's got that ultimate available. He could assassinate her. She goes up in the repel, but she's going to have mana. to come down. But the Pike being out of mana means he cannot chase. Person of Guy is still running around, trying to hope to get maybe one back. But at the moment, it is a 5v3. Arcana Prince, the only person on the front line for the side of Rift Warriors, is pushing the members of Defiance back. Nobody getting the Drake right now. Yeah. Um, this is one of those situations where I really think as much as the, the posturing and the moving around here... Oh, oh, hold on a second. Well, they might still try to fight this 4v3, as the Elise did recall. All right. As you say, just about a positioning bravado, but no one actually going in. Yeah, and the thing is, is that when you've got that much positioning and bravado, just stop beating your chest and take something. Well, they're oh, going to take yeah. the Lissandra a second time. Wait, the Akali's in, but she might go down before she gets the other half of her ultimate out. Majestic holds herself under the turret. should still fall to the turret shot, but the Pike will take down the Thresh. They're looking for Crixen up next. The Elise who already recalled. Person, a guy unable to actually find enough damage for the slows, but Defiance picking up four kills can now turn onto the Mountain Drake. Yeah, and that's that should have been what Rift Warriors did at the end of that fight instead of chasing around trying to get more kills. They should have just turned right onto the objective. And if SPK Defiance didn't want them to have it, they would have had to come to them rather than be getting chased through the jungle. Um, one of the most important things is when you have a small advantage in, in the LCS, you always go for objectives. Chasing kills, kills are not important. They're fun but they're not nearly as important as taking out those objectives, and that is going to be two Mountain Drakes on to the side of Defiance, and that means their Baron taking potential is obscene with this Kai'Sa. The amount of damage they will be dealing to Baron, that really is a tilter in the game on how Rift Warriors have to play this from now on. They have to always have in mind that the Baron could go down at any moment, um, if they don't have vision on it, then they, and that also means that if they expend their teleport top lane, then they're going to have to play, they can't answer a side lane without risk of being, giving up Baron 4v5. They're playing in the side lane, trying to maybe push down Majestic, however, Lissandra has that turret at her back, so able to just clear those minions up, force the members of Rift Warriors away, and they've got so many people on the bottom side, but the Drake is already gone, which is relieving so much pressure. You can see wards covering the Rift here, or the where that Baron is going to spawn for Defiance, and so I think the Defiance, just with understanding where the swinging of the game's positioning have been able to out-rotate Rift Warriors so far... We'll see if they can actually try to win this next fight, which should grant themselves the first Baron of the game. Mm -hmm. And the turret did go down in the top side, so that is a decent amount of gold that went over to the Orin. But He's all in still all... still down in gold to the Gangplank. He's down four, uh, sorry, 5,000 gold to Gangplank, despite getting all 5, of those plates. Sorry, 500 gold. Excuse okay. Me. Well, yeah, you'll always be down in gold to Gangplank, though. I mean, it's Gangplank. He gets six bonus gold every time he, he kills a minion with his Q. Um, that's why he's known as Bankplank. Bankplank. Um, I like it. Little piggy yep. bank. Maybe they can crack him open and get some money back. Well, he's not on a killing spree yet, but if he is, then uh, that is definitely a possibility, Jake. Come on, he's a pirate. Meanwhile, he should have a bounty on his head constantly. I'm just saying. I thought for a moment Majestic was going to try and take that claw and make something happen. I was going, hmm, that probably wouldn't be a good idea. Choices? It's definitely an option. It's not a good one, but it's an option. Uh, both teams have kind of calmed down a little bit. A lot of jockeying for position, a lot of wave clearing, and just kind of general management. Going fishing a little bit, not finding anything yet. But it means that a couple of big items completed, like that Trinity Force on that Gangplank, as Orn going the super tanky route, grabbing that uh, Forge Fire Cape, as he's got himself that extra little bonus to it. So Kali finishing off the Hextech Gun. Basically, everyone's completed at least one major item and their boots so far. Everybody recalling around this mid lane just means that the turret's going to go down completely for free. Uh, Ash and as well as Thresh both back at the same time. And Akali had just backed in the bot side, so uh, they just entirely gave up the turret for free, and they were under no real pressure to do so. So, an unfortunate misplay and miscalculation from the side of Rift Warriors, um, and that's going to tilt the gold into the favor of SPK Defiance for the first time in a while. 
It's been ever so slightly in their favor, but it is getting to the point where it, it, uh, it doesn't matter all that much. I mean, 400 gold, 500 gold is not the end of the world. Um, but even still, it feels good to be able to have that, even though the players in-game probably don't know that. And that actually may be why both teams are playing so uh, safe besides the play right now. They found out the Thresh. He was caught out. His ADC recalled without ah. him. And the play goes to just in case the Thresh burned the flash over the wall, but he saved it. So he will have that the next play. But with the support being down, there are pings onto the Baron for the two Mountain Drake team. And the two control boards. Ah. We're seeing double. This is an interesting decision if it's not if it's red, this is kind of a stealth baron. If it's red, they should definitely pull it off. And there is the ash uh hawk shot. Hawk shot, yeah. Over the wall. But Crickson can get into the Baron pit. All the forge it gone. Does. Can they actually get it? No! The Elise caught on the opposite side of the wall with the ultimate out of the Sijuani. Goes down the Sondra picking her up. They do lose the Kaisa. However, there is still the rest of the team to try to deal with. The Ziakali burns it down. Gangplank picking up a double kill. Arcana Prince so far really untouched. Frag gonna try to tank in the front line between all three members. Lissandra knocked up over the wall, so she's unable to add any extra damage. Kakashi coming out from the base and the claw gets Lissandra out, but it's Baron onto only two members majestic and spartans as that mid lane turret might now go down with four members from rift warriors pushing yeah that's definitely good for defiance to pick up the baron however they lose so much on the back side of it they're gonna lose two towers mid as well as three members so they only have baron on two members plus two more kills onto this already fed akali and let's take the, the fight here sticking to the back line rooting up basically the entire member of rift wars the rest of the team trying to collapse the axe has already dropped and wind is going nuts able to pick up two lasagna's cleaning them all though and pike ends the house taking akali down that basically eliminates all of rift wars besides that elise who might have been hovering that mountain drake it could be a third mountain to defiance but they want to use this Baron to crack open this second turret in the mid lane. So you know everything I was just saying? Ignore that. Defiance back in the lead. I was about I was about to say how the fact that SPK went for an ambitious Baron and then lost the fight was actually really good for the game state uh, for Rift Warriors, but unfortunately, they Ash way Hello. overstayed and there's an orange and just cleanse the ultimate that feels bad man um but yeah so unfortunately it's going to put rift warriors in a position where they're gonna have a tough time coming back into this they've lost three mountain drakes now as well as the baron and look at this vision from defiance four control wards on the baron well, that... this Lissandra might not have enough vision here. She takes the claw out. We'll see if Wind can actually catch up. Trying to distract the minions with a little bit of the five-point strike. All right, nothing to do there. They just clear the wave. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, taking a look, there is a substantial CS difference between the Ash and the Kaisa. But not enough, I don't think, to overcome the scaling difference between the two champions. Ash, like I said, scales pretty well, but on the other hand, you also have Kai'Sa, who scales incredibly well, and the Mountain Drake alone just gives it gives her the potential to both knock down turrets incredibly fast, so if, the, if there's an ace or a four-man drop from the side of Defiance, they just manage to wipe everybody out, then the potential to destroy all of Rift Warrior's base is definitely there. The only saving grace, I think, right now is this Akali. Pike over the wall, locking up the Ash. Ooh, Kaisper immediately being taken down. We'll see if Akali can stop the Lissandra from backing. There's no stun. The TP will complete into that mid lane. As Akali was nerfed, so no stun available to actually stop Lissandra from joining the rest of her team. Majestic, uh, 100 health. You might actually want to recall. I'm sorry, Lissandra. There's no Ocean Drakes, only Mountain Drakes on you as that mid lane. For inhibitor to going to drop. They're looking for the inhibitor itself. Thresh and the Akali coming in from behind. This could be a turn fight as the Orin call the Forge God's gonna miss it entirely. Arcana Prince trying to take up the team. Spartans gonna be chased down by the Akali. Should be taken out. He will drop. Arcana Prince able to sidestep long enough. Kakashi flashing away. He's so incredibly low. Can the gameplay actually take her down? 
Akali has rejoined the rest of her team. Blush Uwu picking up that Akali. And now the Ash Arrow locking up the Kaisa. Blush Uwu will drive to the Elise who finally gets the first damage down. Arcana Prince delaying long enough. The team doesn't get ace, but their middle inhibitor is down. Yeah, having a mid, mid inhib drop there kind of sucks. However, the fight went pretty much even. It's a three for three overall. Um, though a couple of members did come back up toward the end. Uh, the uh, Ash ultimate uh, clutch at securing that last kill. Unfortunately, even though Akali... Akali's overplaying her hand in a lot of situations. Mm -hmm. She's doing really well in the early game, but not knowing when to leave well enough alone and just let it go. Um, uses the second half of perfect execution to dive into the middle of three members and depending on the shroud to keep her alive but unfortunately she gets tagged by Kaisa's W which does reveal her and then just gets AoE down um, so had she not dove in right there getting the two kills as well as, well as the shutdown onto Pike would have definitely been just worth and kind of take a, take your victories where you can. Well, that and three members of the side of Defiance have Oracle Lens. All three of the tanky members of the Sejuani, the Pike, who's the initiator, and the Lissandra, who knows that she's got to be looking for the Akali to ult, all have that, and that can reveal her through the Shroud. Person of Guy trying to fight this spider is gonna get the burst. Whoa! Elise goes golden all the way down. Krixen will survive. Gangplank gets the time he needs to back away. Now the fight into that mid lane looking for the Orn. They're gonna lock him up. Our counter prince. He's so tanky. He's got the knockup. The Ash finally finds another ultimate onto the Kaisa Blush. Ooh, backing away. The Kali going in. Trying to find the assassination. She goes golden surviving for a moment longer. The Thresh with the shield. Not even needed. A Kali makes it out. And now Frag gonna be the target. The Sejuani has that double buff. So can re-engage anytime she wants. Gangplank rejoining the fight. The 5v5 ending with no deaths just yet. Wanted to quickly note. Uh, I actually completely forgot what I was going to quickly note. Never mind. All ultimates burned from the side of Defiance with the exception of Pikes, though. But they are turning onto this Baron, and that's just go. It's going to melt. There's no way that they can contest it. Crixon trying to walk in, but not even going to commit to it. The Baron's gone. And that's what three mountain drakes do, Jake. With a Kaisa, they just knock down the Baron. Absolutely no chance for a contest. Zero vision on it. And I think that might cement Defiance's lead or uh, victory here. Well, and what I wanted to say earlier and completely forgot for a period of time was the fact that even though the fight went fairly even, the fight previous to this one, there was three different people that had bounties that all got shut down, leading to about 1,100 gold going into the pockets of Rift Warriors. But that difference has not been made up. They're still down 4,000 gold. They're going to grab themselves an Ocean Ray. Lissandra's going in once again, going for the fight. Goes golden for a bit longer. Can they actually find the Ash? They've been able to secure that. At least going to be up next. Trick sitting survive for a moment longer with the Zanyas, but surrounded by the enemy will fall. Wind going to be running away. They've only got two members, but that may be all that they need. Bottom lane and top lane inhibitors still chosen for them if they want to be able to grab that blush. Going to not be able to take down Akana Prince as he gets that Dark Passage Lantern out. And there's a Baron empowered three members pushing into this mid lane. They might be trying to look to grab inhibitor or Nexus turret, excuse me. Yeah, no, I, they should definitely end here. Um, they definitely have the power here. Their wind is up, but there's no consistent damage. The ash has fallen. Lissandra gonna be locked up. Call the Forge God. Might be able to land onto all members of a Defiance. They're gonna be low execution from wind. Charge through one time. Goes golden, surviving for a bit longer. Ash arrow locks up Lissandra, but the Akali is already down. And you talked about it. The burst damage is going to be falling. Spartan Z trying to do what he can to lock up or stun up the enemy team. He gets the Ash. They're able to take her down once again. Arcana Prince will survive. Person of Guy is eating some oranges to bring his health back up as Crixen is baiting them outside of the base, but will still go down. Nexus turrets have fallen. The Nexus itself left up as Arcana Prince and Kakashi doing the best that they can to defend and stop this last push. But there's no consistent damage from Defiance that's here. The Gangplank gonna step forward to man play by the threat. She's gonna CC lock one. It's not gonna be enough as Spartan Z flashes the side. Frag will drop. Arcana Prince chasing down person of Guy. Can the Gangplank get the Nexus itself? Spartan Z is on it as well. It's coming down to the wire and the inhibitor responds. 
Are you kidding me? Defiance have to back away. The Spartan's going to be able to dash and survive for a bit longer. Can he actually get out of the base? Akali is right on person of guy's tail. The Gangplank not able to find the slow. The Shroud. Oh, great hook there from Spartan Z. All right. Shuriken flip not being able to connect from wind tries to get a little bit of distance but man oh man rift war is still in this due to the inhibitor troll save yeah inhibitor comes back up but unfortunately i don't think the divine intervention there at the end is gonna be enough to save them down uh, with their backs against the wall almost eight thousand gold down at the moment they are definitely in a dire position. It's possible that they could come back, but with Spartan Z coming in onto Kaisper right now, it does not land the bone skewer, unfortunately, uh, unfortunately for him, but that would have been the end of the game. Well, they're going to try to push forward with the last bit of this Baron that they still have. They might just try to five-man shove it, but it's going to be a 5v5 fight right here in this mid lane. Looking for the open inhibitor. Want to quickly check and see how much longer that Baron has. Wait, it's just dropped off. So there is no Baron available to them anymore. That may mean that they actually back away. An Infernal Drake up in two minutes. The Baron up in two minutes as well, which means he got two minutes for potential stalemate between these two teams. Or going to be pulled back with the Bone Skewer. All right, he just dashes out. Yeah. In all honesty, though, it shouldn't take them two minutes if they just walk forward onto the Nexus. Like, if Sejuani decide if they went and they knocked down oh, the Oh, they're going to be making Hold a play. On. The Ornn uses the call the Forge God. Nice little cleanse there from Blush. Gets him out for a moment. They're turning it around. The Elise goes in, takes out. No, not quite the Kaisa. There it is. The Akali had to do the work to finish it off. Kakashi in the middle of the enemy team trying to CC them as long as possible. Lissandra will fall because Akali is just going all over the back line. Elise being able to take down Pike as well. The fight has actually been won by Rift Warriors, but now Frag and Person of Guy are doing what they can to distract the enemy team. Elise is going to get a recall off. Person of Guy, the only man inside the enemy team base as that Akali going to be stopped by Sejuani from recalling. Person to guy on the run out of the base should be able to slow them down enough that he escapes. But these fights are actually favoring Rift Warriors now. Yeah, it was just an excellent Ash Arrow catching the uh, catching the Kaisa out as and then chain CC into the Elise stun, forcing out the cleanse and eventually leading to the fight. Uh, but they were caught out 2v5 right there and then lost two of their most critical members, and there was no Sejuani to land the CC onto the Ash there. And really, at the moment, uh, oh wow, I just looked, 10 and five on this Akali, despite being as down as she is, is still popping off in these team fights. Well, down, I'd actually say that she's at least even, if not up, because Lissandra is only 5, 6, and 11. The Kaisa is 6, 8, and 12. The two most heavy damage and carrying champions for Defiance consistently died to the assassination between the Elise and Akali. All it takes is one Ash Arrow, and you find yourself potential victory in that fight. Infernal Drake is going to go the way of Defiance, and they're going to have 20 seconds as well to reposition around the Baron, which Rift Warriors are already grouped around. Yeah, but if they if they group here, the problem is, is that Defiance can just walk down mid lane. There's it's a it's a naked nexus with a with a half health inhibitor on it. If they just send somebody to TP or walk down mid lane right now, they win the, the, the game. They want to fight. The they're thresh. looking for Kakashi. The Ash is going to miss. It's gone. But now the Akali might be able to take that Shuriken flip right into the entire enemy team. And there she is going to survive for a moment longer. It's Shadow Shroud. But there she goes, dropping not a single member of Defiance that has fallen yet. And inside this very thin channel, they found themselves victory. The GP ultimate slowing down to Kaisper. We'll see if the Ash can make it out. Pike ultimate says you cannot. Spartan's going to drop to the Elise she still has some fight left in her but the rest of the team from Defiance who needs Baron when you've got that Infernal Drake and Triple Mountains move right on into the Nexus itself trying to shove the Elise out Krigson we'll see what this Elise can do the Nexus goes down should be the end of the game they want one more kill Krigson gonna delay by going golden for a little bit longer there's the ace Lissandra Majestic picking it up ending the game Defiance coming out with the finish but it was a messy completion to that game yeah, messy and a little bit unnecessary. Defiance, if they wanted to be clutch and clean about it, could have just gone down mid at any time they wanted to. However, posturing around that Baron, uh, it was it was a Hail Mary 
from Rift Warriors and a decent call rather than to just choke themselves out. If the Baron had spawned earlier while they were going for the Infernal Drake, it would have been a good call and to try and recall back and, and maybe give themselves a little bit of life left in the game. All in all, very even in the early game, a couple of key decisions ends up turning it in the favor of Defiance. And now I think we're about ready for a break, Jake. <laughs> Well, I just want to mention very quickly that uh, for the side of Rift Warriors, you could see in a handful of plays where their uh, composition ended up working. The, uh, Ash Kaisper was able to find the Ash Ultimate onto the one key member, whether it's the Kaisa or the Lissandra, and then Elise and Akali go in, assassinate those damage dealers, and then outside of Person of Guy, who is always a consistent player for the side of Defiance, uh, the rest of the team really fell apart. Spartan Z and Frag not really having any damage to bring to the rest of those fights once the carries went down. However, if you can't find those carries, the game is just going to fall to the other team. Team, and that last Ash arrow drifting through the entire enemy team, and then Akali going in with a shuriken flip alone into the middle of four people while well, Akana Prince was there, and then he was immediately gone. Uh, but with the uh, Akali going in and dying without being able to pick up anyone, the carries survived, and that meant that Defiance could push in for a victory. Uh, well, good and well earned victory for Defiance. Rift Roars, we'd love to have you back as well, and they will continue to play on in the rest of the Scrim Gym. They have two more games to beat up their opponents as well but we as Wraith said are going to take a short break and be right back with semi-finals game number one we're swapping to the other half of the bracket to check in with those teams that were able to win the round number one we'll be right back don't go anywhere don't touch that browser Draven will be right back 